Hello everyone, Criticorn here. Today's ship review is going to be about the Hull series, the five different variants of cargo ship that we're going to be seeing most commonly transporting goods and commodities across the entire verse. For those of you that aren't too familiar with the Hull series or are considering a career in the transport industry, but yet still not sure which ship would be a good fit for you, I'm going to cover all five of the ships and give their basic layout, along with giving my own personal recommendation as to which ship would be a good fit for each different kind of play style. Of course, for you seasoned veterans, this info will probably already be known to you as I'm just going to cover the basic info for players who don't know about the Hull series. Also, the game is still in the development phase and should the ships change, I'll make an updated video at the appropriate time to talk about all the changes is made. In the official description, the whole series is talked about as an interconnected system of ships designed around the same principles and intended to share the same equipment and maintenance processes. From the single person hull A to the supermassive hull E bulk freighter, there's a hole for every job. Every ship includes a manned cab, a drive unit, a telescoping cargo spindle. When laden, the spindle expands to accept cargo pallets. When unloaded, the spindle retracts for faster, more maneuverable travel. So I'm going to start off talking about the hull A. It's a very basic ship. Crew of one can carry 48 cargo. It's very small and affordable and one of the first ships that you could pledge for for under $100. Now I do want to shed a little bit of negative light on this particular ship, but I hope you guys don't hate me because I promise I will shed the positive aspects of it as well. The negative sides, at least for me personally, was that the cargo capacity on this particular ship is the same as a freelancer. And for those who aren't too familiar with the Freelancer, in a nutshell, when it comes to comparing to this ship, they have the same cargo loadout, but the Freelancer comes with some pretty decent firepower and can better defend itself in a dangerous situation. Of course, the pendulum's going to swing both ways here. As I do like to be well-armed if I'm going to be transporting, the ship itself is going to be a lot cheaper than the Freelancer, not only an insurance cost, but maybe fuel cost as well because it's a more lighter, agile ship. And unlike the Freelancer, the Hole is also a single-seated ship, benefiting players who maybe like to run more solo and not have to be bothered with hiring crew as well. All in all, if you're not hell-bent on transporting goods across the galaxy, I would say for newer players to earn this ship in-game. It's a great introductory ship and would give you a great idea if it's something you want to pursue and invest your time and energy in. The next ship's going to be the Hull B. This ship is going to be a larger, more sturdy version of the Hull A. It's going to be a crew of one, which is great for the solo players, and also carry 384 cargo units, which is going to be 8 times more than the Hull A. You're certainly going to be able to make a lot more money with this particular ship, but while you are a larger target for pirates, the insurance and fuel cost might also add up as well. Now when it comes to pledging for this particular ship, it's also really affordable, coming in at $90. I would strongly suggest anyone who is considering getting a Hull A, maybe purchase the Hull B. It's only going to cost $30 more, and the added benefit of out carrying the Hull A eight times more. Think about that. Transporting goods back and forth up to eight times with a Hull A versus doing it just once with the whole B. It's just my own personal preference and I would just strongly suggest that getting the whole B for an extra $30 is certainly worth the investment. And with that we move on to the whole C, the workhorse of the entire verse. In the official description it's described as the most common ship in the entire galaxy and has that intended sweet spot design between the smaller hull series and the larger hull series. While it's not going to be considered the massive super freighter like the hull D and E, it's still going to retain a large cargo capacity while retaining its maneuver ability, allowing it to mimic its smaller counterparts. This is going to be the first ship in the whole series that's going to be multi-crewed, requiring a total crew of three to operate the ship at 100% efficiency. It's also going to have a huge cargo capacity of 4,608. I really like the whole C for a variety of reasons, which I'll brush over quickly. The first benefit being that I think the hull B and A's cargo capacity are so small that they can't actually afford to hire an escort. With the hull C, the benefit of having a large cargo means more net profit, allowing the pilot to work in a budget to hire escort pilots. Another reason I enjoy this particular ship is it allows you the ability to fly with friends. As we all know, real life does come first from time to time and we have to walk away from our keyboard. If you are flying with friends in a hull C, you're going to be able to walk away from your keyboard and let one of your friends take over the controls. You don't have to worry about all your cargo gaining attacked by pirates as you will just be sitting there if you are flying a single-seated ship. What I also like about the whole C's cargo capacity is it's just the right size where players didn't have to spend a huge fortune should they have to jettison the cargo, lose it to pirates, or another phenomenon. It's easy to forget that cargo pilots have to pay for all of their cargo should they be doing freelance work and that it's very risky in the end should they lose all their cargo, especially in the whole D and especially the whole E, to the point where I'm sure I would get an ulcer and gray hair if I did have to worry about flying that fortune across the universe. 
All in all, I really like the whole C, and I think a lot of players are going to enjoy it as well, because it allows players to participate in that risk-reward system, and gamble a little bit and go into those dangerous parts of the universe, while being able to hire some escorts and not be completely defenseless. If you do want to pledge for this ship early though, it did cost $200 last sale and that could go up, so just remember that it's okay if you can afford this ship once the game comes out, you can always earn it in game with just in a few weeks time. Next we move on to the Hull D. In the official description it says that the Hull D kicks off the larger end of the spectrum with a massive ship build around a rugged frame. The Hull D is affordable enough to be operated by a mild size organization and companies. The UEE military used modified Hull Ds as parts of their supply chain, arming and refueling the soldiers on the front line. Lines. The ship is pretty massive. When fully extended, it's going to be larger than my reclaimer. It requires a crew of five to operate, and it can actually carry 20,736 cargo units, which is going to be 4.5 times more cargo carried than the whole sea. Now one element that's going to come with the territory of owning the larger hull series ships like the D and the E is the amount of time and interaction it takes to load up all the cargo on the ships. It's an important element that I want newer players to remember before they get the larger ships to keep in mind, especially if they don't have too much time to play Star Citizen on a daily basis. Of course, it goes without saying that the insurance on this ship, along with hiring escorts to protect it with its larger size, is going to be costing you more than the whole sea ship. Now, if you would like to pledge for a ship like this, it was $350 last year, but if you don't have a good gaming computer, I would say invest that money in your gaming computer first if money is a little tight and you're on a budget. Also, if you do have other careers that you would like to explore within Star Citizen, wait and earn this ship in-game or serve on a crew with a large hull series ship and see if it's something that you would like. Other than that, I think this is a great ship to have, but of course, there's always that question of why would I settle for the whole D when I could upgrade to the massive, Godzilla-sized ship, the whole E. Now this ship doesn't only just have a massive cargo capacity, but it also dwarfs the Idris in its sheer size as well. The thrusters and engines alone are almost as big as my reclaimer. Requiring a crew of five to operate, this ship has a cargo capacity of 98,000. In the official description, it said that the largest specialized freighter available on the market today, the Holy, is generally owned by major corporations and operated with a high degree of planning. The ship is so massive in size and carrying so much cargo, it even has a warning disclaimer down below on the website, particularly stressing to players that you really only ever see these cargo ships trading in safe zone areas, and that this ship is not for the faint heart, as pirates will be hunting for these particular ships. And that high degree level of planning in the official description cannot be taken lightly. And while a high degree level of planning for some might mean, well, I'm just going to hire as many escorts as I possibly can and we'll just hope for the best, high degree level of planning, for me anyway, would require Secret Service detailed protection. And by Secret Service level, I mean actually getting my entire security detail together and mapping out the entire route ahead of time by physically flying down it, looking at all the different points that we're going to be using, whether they be jump points, or looking at asteroid fields and nebulas that can be used not only for ambushes for pirates to pounce on you, but for points of evacuation and plan B, C, and D points should certain situations arise. And once everybody's on the same page and the cargo ship's ready to fly, I would have scouting ships go ahead and actually stay in the certain areas that look like they could be potential ambush points for pirates who could be lurking around. Of course, maybe my level of planning might be even a little too much for RSI standards, but that's just my level of planning and preparedness that I'd like to have if I was flying this particular ship. One very important element to keep in mind is that you do have to pay for that cargo yourself if you are working freelance. So just keep in mind it's always good to have a backup ship or in a completely different career in general to make all of that revenue so you can afford to purchase the cargo. This ship was $550 last year and if you're not really sure if you can afford that or you don't have that gaming computer yet, just save that money and wait and earn the ship in game. It'll still be as just as much fun working up to this ship as well as being able to serve on the crew of one and still getting the same experience. Now you may notice that I didn't talk about the weaponry on all these particular ships just simply because the developers are still tweaking and changing them, saying that they want all of these ships to be balanced in such a way that they can defend themselves from maybe one tiny fighter or maybe a couple, but that these ships need escorts and that the weaponry on them will never be able to protect you from a full out squadron of any kind of pirates. 
That said, the ships will be heavily shielded, protecting the ship's hull and the cargo, while the hull of the ship will also be heavily armored. There's also going to be further updates for the whole series as well, we're just not too sure about the gaming mechanics, and some of the ships are going to be released later when they're revamped as the military version. The first update being that you'll be able to put fighters within the cargo spindles themselves, trading out the cargo space to have fighters help defend you in a dangerous situation. The developers also said that there's going to be a hull C and D military variant of those ships themselves, but those will be released later, closer to the game's release, where you can earn them in-game. All in all, the whole series are great ships, and I like how they can accommodate different players for different playstyles. Styles. The smaller ships helping out players who maybe like to fly solo and don't want to have to find crews every time they go out on a mission. It also helps players who can't play Star Citizen for long lengths of time, so they don't have to spend too much time loading up those spindles on the cargo pads. Then we move up to those larger ships, which have the multi-crewed systems for players who like to work as a team and work with other friends or AI, along with that risk-reward system flying through the more dangerous parts of space to get that higher payout. So with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope that this video was insightful and helped you newer players out to better understand the whole series. I know that this video was a little more lengthy, so I hope I didn't bore you to tears. But thank you so much for watching the video. And as always, thank you so much for all the support you've been giving me in this channel. It's always a treat to make a video like this, and I can't wait to keep talking about all the other ships in Star Citizen. So with all that said, I hope you guys have a great week, a great weekend, and I will talk to you later.